People keep saying that electric cars are too expensive, that internal combustion cars, they're cheaper. That's why EVs are still, well, around 25% of global car sales. However, this isn't actually accurate. New data has been revealed showing that actually the cost of electric cars, even outside of China, is well very close to that of internal combustion. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. If you're in Australia, I'll be at the Light Commercial Motor Show next week. It's on Thursday and Friday next week. There'll be a bunch of EV sessions, live sessions. Come and say hi. You can get a 50% discount on tickets in the description below. Electric vehicles may already match and beat internal combustion cars on total cost of ownership. In fact, I think if you're looking at, say, a medium-sized or medium to large or small to medium or small SUV, I think most of the time your cost of ownership and the cost of the car together, the total cost is going to be lower if you buy the electric car, especially if you've got solar. However, it is generally accepted that the real tipping point in the global EV market will not come until there is price parity on the sticker price of the cars themselves. So if EVs cost the exact same as internal combustion. Now, obviously in China, uh, Nepal, the price of EVs is actually lower for many models than the price of internal combustion cars. And it is true that um, EV prices are continuing to fall. And as, as a result, sales are skyrocketing. The 20% fall in battery prices over 2024 and continued decline in the cost of batteries in 2025 is helping, well, helping EVs to become cheaper. It's not just this whole crazy bloodbath of manufacturers competing on price. It's also the cost of batteries coming down as well. Bloomberg NEF data says that battery cell and battery pack prices well, particularly battery pack prices have fallen to US $112 per kilowatt hour down from US $166 per kilowatt hour. That, that's a big drop, right? In 2022, the price was 166. In 2025, it's 112. You cannot say anything like that about internal combustion cars, engines, or anything that goes into an internal combustion car. But to give you some real context on this, the price at the pack level for batteries in 2013, 12 years ago, was $806 per kilowatt hour. It's now, like I said before, 112. 806 down to 112. So the driven.io says that this is a reminder that this technology, battery packs in EVs and battery packs for energy storage, has fallen at a similar pace to solar panels. It's true. I mean, this staggering fall in prices is remarkable. The battery cell prices, by the way, give you some idea here, are around 55 US dollars per kilowatt hour. So you got to approximately double the price of the cell price to get the pack price because the pack includes a bunch of other stuff. It's not just cells. Kobad Bhavnagri, the global head of strategy at Bloomberg NEF, says it is clear that the cost of batteries have resumed their downward trend after a brief price rise in the global energy price fueled by Russia's invasion of, of Ukraine, which was obviously that began years ago. Now, this is, of course, important for what it helps enable in storage in the power system, he told the Australian Clean Energy Summit uh, earlier this week. But it is even more important in the fact that it drives a tipping point in electric vehicle economics, which are on the cost of sticker price parity with internal combustion engine vehicles in most major markets for most classes of passenger vehicle. He said this as well. And this is going to mean that electric vehicle sales will continue to go up this year. The prices will continue to fall. We expect that one in four vehicles sold around the world will be for the electric. And the only real direction for that is for greater and greater market share. Now, much to my surprise, electric cars have been historically quite a bit more expensive in Europe than the rest of the world, and therefore quite a bit more expensive than internal combustion imperative sized vehicles. However, Bloomberg NEF said this, their data says large electric SUVs in Europe 
have hit price parity. And within the next year, price parity will arrive for small and medium EVs in Europe, large SUVs in the United States, small and medium EVs in China, and small EVs in Japan. Now, Giles Parkinson from New Economy has reported on what's happening here. And this is so important to recognize that actually electric car sales are going to increase at a a very fast pace. They're going up this year by 30%. But I think we're going to find over the next two years, sales will increase far faster than they are this year. And this is really what it comes down to the economics, because buying a car is largely an emotional decision. When you see a sticker price for an EV, maybe it's 20% higher, the emotion of the argument often is like, well, oh, that's just, it's too expensive. But when the price is equivalent, or as it will be in five years from now, cheaper to buy an EV, it becomes a very different situation. One way you say to yourself, okay, do I want to buy an internal combustion engine car, have to pay for all that fuel, and have a, an asset which is going to be eventually stranded? When I say stranded, I mean, eventually we're going to have literally hundreds of thousands of gas stations closing down. They will. The economics just won't make sense. I mean, look at what's happened in places like Norway. Uh, Look at what's happening in Nepal. Uh, This is a situation where there's no doubt disruptions happen. There's no doubt these gas stations will close. Uh, There's a a situation where you have to say to yourself, am I going to spend a lot of money on a car where I'm going to go, oh, I pull around my corner, there's my usual gas station I use, and all of a sudden it's shut down. You're going to get this feeling of range anxiety, real proper range anxiety that will come eventually. And you can't recharge your gasoline car at home. So there's really a situation where there's going to be nothing you can do except to call a tow truck. Electric car sales in China over the last two weeks have suddenly spiked. Uh, I don't think anyone thought it was going to happen this quickly. Guys, I've been saying that it was going to take until about 2030 until China hit 100% NEVs, meaning a combination of EVs and plug-in hybrids, predominantly EVs, That was going to happen by 2030 in China. Uh, I think I was completely wrong. I think it's now going to happen in 2028. We now have numbers from the Chinese car market and electrification is rapidly accelerating. The pace has shocked even the Chinese government. The Chinese government said this wouldn't happen until, they said what's happening today wouldn't happen until 2030. So China is five years ahead of even the Chinese government's own predictions. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Guys, we've now done nearly 7,100 videos on the channel over the past just over four years. So thanks for your support. China, in that period of time, four and a half years, has gone from selling a few electric cars to selling millions of them. I mean, crazy numbers. This year, 51% of all cars sold in China have been NEVs, new energy vehicles, plug-in hybrids or EVs, but about 66% or 65 to 67% of those have been fully electric. So fully electric cars are actually much more popular than hybrids, plug-in hybrids in China. In the last two weeks, nearly 60% of cars sold in China were electric, nearly 60%. Uh, This is a a real surprise because this means that uh, EV sales are growing up much faster than what was predicted. And from the 1st of July to the 13th of July, cnevpost.com says that passenger NEV retail sales reached 332,000. That's just in the space of 12 days, up 26% year on year. 